Hello everybody, I'm Meteorologist Matt Gray. Welcome to another edition of The Brainstorm. And we're going to talk today about some uh, stuff that you probably have seen at some point or another over the past couple of weeks because it has to do with what freezing fog leaves behind. And it's something that I actually ended up showing. I actually ended up showing on TV last week. So let me show that to you now. Got the screen already. Here we go. So thank you again to Jim Clausen who sent these wonderful pictures from the Grand Coulee of these ice crystals that were stuck to all of these plants. And you can see they're quite spectacular, right? And these were about an inch long. Now on TV, I was like, hey, these is what called is what called is what uh, what is called hoarfrost, H O A R, and you Basically, it's all sitting in the freezing fog, and the ice is just collecting and crystallizing on any surface it touches. Uh, it turns out I was partially correct. Partially correct. This happens in meteorology, folks, I promise. So let's go over what this actually is, or the actual process by this, how it's different from hoarfrost, even though it's very close, and talk about some of the neat stuff that goes along with it, because stuff like this is pretty, pretty cool. So. Basically, all this is is just the moisture in the atmosphere is crystallized on this plant here that Jim captured uh, on his camera, taking his trip to the Grand Coulee, watching some ice climbers there uh, on on the cliffs. So let's go first of all and talk a little bit about frost formation. It's all about temperature cooling down to air just above the surface, cooling off. Temperatures freeze. The moisture freezes as well. That's sitting there on the ground and it ended up turning into frost which is just little kind of micro ice crystals sitting on the ground so that's your average frosty morning that we might see in fall or in spring because the ground cools off a lot quicker than the air does the same goes for when you have to scrape ice off of your windshield that's because that glass the temperature right above the surface of the glass is cooled off very very quickly and so ice forms on that surface. We see this so often, in many, many places. And so this is the fundamental principle that rapid cooling and coming into contact with moist air of some of these, of some of these surfaces. That's the basic principle behind the two things we're gonna talk about today, rime ice and hoarfrost. In some cases, they look extremely similar. That's why I made my mistake last week, but pretty cool so let's talk about rime ice first of all in the case of what Jim saw in the Grand Coulee and what we have seen a lot around here because of all of our foggy days freezing fog which means everything is kind of ended up getting coated in a really micro thin layer of ice because that fog is super cooled water so what do we mean that means that because well in sh in the uh, short version physics you can end up with super cooled water droplets, water that is not frozen, but is below the freezing point of water. It's below 32 degrees. So we all know the air temperature is below 32 degrees most nights this time of the year. And so we still have fog that's freezing fog. And when it comes into contact with some of these surfaces that are very, very cold, well, it will deposit a little bit of ice on it, especially when you have some pretty high humidity out there. And that's exactly what rime ice is, especially if the wind is blowing that fog around, wherever that fog is pushing into, whatever surface that is, will start to collect and deposit ice. Now, in the case of very calm conditions, like we've seen around here lately, that freezing fog will develop these kind of needle-like crystals. And that's what we saw in the Grand Coulee, and that is what you're seeing in what they call soft rime that develops on tree branches and whatever else. It, uh, it wants to stick to. So that's pretty cool, right? They're, they're fun to look at. They got beautiful features. They're great if they, you can get them out in the sun. There's another type of rime ice, which is a little bit harder, and that creates some really dramatic features. And I just want to show you that really quickly before we talk about hoarfrost for a minute. So take a look at this picture. Strong winds, a lot of mist that happens, a lot of mountaintops. The White Mountains of New Hampshire, like uh, the Mount Washington Observatory, 
uh, in the New Hampshire area in New England is famous for this where they're just basically socked in the clouds full of super cooled water all winter long and so this ice whatever side the wind is blowing it just cakes on and so you have this huge thick layer of ice it creates some really dramatic looking images and that is one of those so the wind is blowing the direction that the arrow shows and so it's just basically pushing that moist air that moist those moist cloud droplets the super cooled cloud droplets uh, right in onto that cold surface of this concrete pillar and they freeze and they gradually collect and become these crazy awesome little little ice structures so and we see a, quite a bit of that when we have long periods of freezing fog on some trees and you get up into higher elevations and you see that as well on a lot of the trees where it's actually rime ice that develops sometimes along with the snow that falls on them in some of these snowstorms and wind events so pretty cool stuff rime ice look at some pictures give it a google it's super super awesome to see what rime ice can do because it's pretty it's pretty cool now let's talk about hoarfrost because it's a little different it may look the same as some of the rime that we saw uh, in the grand coulee last week but the process behind it is just slightly different here's where i made my mistake i know weather people making a term for everything but I promise this will be interesting so when it is cold enough and it is very moist but maybe not moist enough for that condensation into super cooled water. Sometimes Mother Nature skips the process from gas, water vapor, to liquid, water droplets, to ice, ice crystals and snow. Sometimes it just skips the process. And that is what we see here. Very cold, clear conditions where a lot of those surfaces, those tree branches, the ground, uh, you see this a lot actually on snow banks, some of those snow banks next to your sidewalk that haven't melted yet. You'll see a lot of this on clear cold nights is all of a sudden those ice crystals, basically they just start to form. They are taking all the available moisture out of the air and they are building these ice crystals as that contact of that moist air with that cold surface. There we go. Snap starts building ice crystals and so you get these kind of vertical little towers of ice that develop on all of these little surfaces here and so it looks very very similar to some of that soft rime ice that we saw there but the key point is is that it's clear skies and that we're not seeing freezing fog super cooled water droplets it's literally just the atmosphere itself and the amount of moisture content in it it's interacting with some of those cold surfaces. So it's a very slight differentiation, but it's enough to where they have different definitions. So whether it's rime ice, whether it's hoarfrost, you often get the same result and it looks really, really cool. But hey, deep diving, that's what we're here for on the brainstorm. So if you enjoyed this explanation today, this video, if you want something for me to brainstorm, if you've got a weather question, if I don't know, and sometimes I don't, and I make mistakes too, I'm not perfect, I'm not, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't top of the class, that's for sure, but I know where to look to figure it out. So send me an email, mgray, M-G-R-A-Y, at kxoy.com. Send me your weather questions, send me anything that you want me to brainstorm, and we will explain it right here on this YouTube series. All right, if you enjoyed that, Make sure to subscribe to 4 News Now. We got the free KXLY app, the free KXLY weather app for all of your on the go needs. And hey, subscribe to the Brainstorm newsletter so you don't miss any of our videos or any of our other weather content delivered to your inbox twice a week. All right, have a great rest of your day, everybody. We'll talk to you again over the weekend.